Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here with a return guest, Bob Liberde from ESG. Bob, always happy to have you on the Zcast. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. We are here, as you can see, uh, we're in the MGM Music Hall at Fenway Park. It's the newly designed uh, building that's part of the Fenway Sports Management. Uh, Extreme did a little bit of an influencer summit. In fact, we're going to go over to the Sox game a bit later. Uh, but I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, where Extreme is as a company. And just as a refresher, uh, Extreme isn't the company <laughs> that a lot of people knew five years ago, right? This, yeah. th th this is a markedly different organization. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point because when you think about where they were five years ago, six years ago, it's dramatically different. They've been able to not only acquire technology, but really integrate it as well. So they're standing in a much better place than they were five, six years ago. They've got fully integrated solutions. They've got a universal cloud management that actually now can be on cloud, yeah. in the cloud or on premises as well. Um, and they've really tied together universal hardware. So they've made a lot of great strides to simplify the deployment, the management of networks for organizations across the board. Yeah, the integration actually is the one thing that's been amazing, because lots of companies go through acquisition, and uh, a lot of companies avoid it acquisitions because it's very difficult to integrate, but they brought together uh, in, you know, Extreme's legacy product, Interasys, Avaya, Brocade, Motorola, uh, Aerohive, Aerohive, Ipanema, and they've actually managed to bring them down to one hardware platform, <laughs> which, which, which is uh, remarkable in the relatively short period of time they've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one hardware platform, one cloud management yeah. platform for everything as yeah. well. So as organizations are looking to drive operational efficiency, having just one management console to go to is really impressive. And I think as their CEO, Ed Meyercourt, said this morning, they're a billion and a half in revenue now, so they're, you know, they're a major... They're, they're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. They so, keep growing. Now, Absolutely. if people do know Extreme, they, uh, they've gotten a lot of eyeballs in the last two years. They're an official analytics company for Major League Baseball, yes. NASCAR, NHL, NFL, um, Man United, Man Liverpool. United, Liverpool, yeah. yeah, a whole bunch of different sports leagues. And I'll tell you something, Bob. <laughs> The, the experience, I, as you know, I go to a lot of sports venues. Yes. The experience is so dramatically different venue to venue. And yes. one of the fascinating things about Extreme is they've got all the, I don't know how they got these, but they got all the really tough old facilities. Olympic Stadium, Old Trafford Stadium, Fenway Park where we are now, Wrigley Field, LA Memorial, right. Lambeau Field, right? And these things weren't designed with Wi-Fi in mind Correct. back in 1912 or whatever when this place was built, right? So, yeah. but they've done a phenomenal job in actually figuring out how to make Wi-Fi work in hard environments, haven't they? Yeah, they absolutely have. And, and I think that's impressive, right? Because you've got these large environments and it's, it's kind of like, you know, inviting 50, 30, 40, 50,000 of your closest friends over and like ensuring that they yeah. still have a good experience while they're there. And so being able to do that in these large stadium environments is really impressive. In addition to, it's not just the connectivity that's impressive though, it's also the analytics yes. that they provide. And being able to have these venues better understand how people are acting and what they're doing while they're in the, in the environment so that they can work harder to provide a differentiated experience, right? Because it's, you're competing against someone with an 80 inch TV at home with popcorn and everything in their yeah. lap sitting on their couch. And so having that data, having that information is going to help them deliver a differentiated experience. And I think that becomes even more important as now online betting and sports betting starts to become more prominent. Yeah, I've actually already made my bets for the game today, so we we'll see that goes. We'll see and, I, and actually, I was talking to Brian Shield here, who's the CIO of Fenway Sports Group, and he said one of the interesting aspects of Fenway, because it's a historic building, you, you know, when they start, started looking at APs, put them under seat, nope, can't drill. Put them on the handrails, nope, those are historic assets, right? Put them overhead, nope, can't do that either, right? right. And, or they got to be painted green, and so the, yeah. I, I will give kudos to the extreme engineering team, because they have managed to work in tough environments, so. Absolutely, and but, they managed to paint everything yeah. Fenway green. Yeah. <laughs> now, not everybody is in a sports facility, right? Extremes, yes. customer base, they're big into sled, right? They're uh, the, um, in uh, you know, different governments. How does, Healthcare, retail. Yeah, yeah, how does what they do here translate into those other aspects, those other verticals? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, the, the reality is, it's, to me, it's about, especially if you're in healthcare, right? You're talking about, it's not about money, it's not about experience, yeah. right? It's about patients' lives. So that concept of being always on, always connected, secure, so you see them extending their fabric, not just in the data center, not just in the campus, but also to those branch locations. So enabling that hyper segmentation for organizations to limit blast radius in case they do get attacked, things like that. Being able to ensure that you've got 
APs that have dual connectivity to ensure that right, they're completely fault tolerant. Yeah. So I think those are all aspects today that translate into every industry, right? Organizations yes. have to be always available all the time. And one of the things Norman Rice, their COO, said this morning during his presentation was that the network has never been more important. Yeah. And, and I concur with that completely. In fact, the survey I did last year, I asked business leaders about their opinion of the network post-pandemic, and I think it was 58% said it's more, more important or significantly more important. Yeah. And part of that is because we live in a digital world, and so what are some of these building blocks of digital? IoT, cloud, mobile, AI, right? They're all network-centric in nature. Correct. And uh, this really actually was underscored to me. I was at the Adobe Summit a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they were trying to show how their generative AI tool can help you create content on the fly. And the Wi-Fi in the Venetian was awful. <laughs> and so they're trying to run demos at the booth. They can't run. Yeah. You know, they're bringing in like, people are tethering to their phone and stuff, and it just shows you, businesses can spend all this money on upgrading customer experience, fan experience, patient experience, student yep. experience, right? But if the network hasn't been modernized, you know, you're not going to get the return. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a huge part because the, the challenge that we're seeing now is obviously in this highly distributed mm -hmm. environment. The network obviously plays a way bigger role. It's much more important. The other piece of that is, is the network really isn't measured in QoS anymore, right? Quality of service, yes. which is a pretty much a network specific, but it, it is about QoE. It is about the quality of experience that you can deliver. And so you have to ensure that the network is going to deliver the highest possible quality of experience to those end users, regardless of where the application is, regardless of where the users are. Yeah, now um, let's shift a little bit to product. They did talk a lot about you know, Wi-Fi, which you're very well known for. Yep. You know, they just released a 6 product. One of the more recent acquisitions was uh, Ipanema, which moved into the SD-WAN space. How do you see them in this space here? Yeah, I think it's been, it's been really interesting. Obviously, maybe a little bit late to the game with SD-WAN compared to others, but their ability to integrate it very quickly into the cloud-based management. So again, you've got a unified wired wireless WAN and even data center. Um, and the ability, what, what we're start, starting to see now is that they're incorporating it with their fabric technology. Yeah. So now, instead of having the fabric just in the data center and campus, they can now extend it out to those branches. So again, trying to drive that operational efficiency, try and drive a little bit greater levels of security for those organizations as well. So really nice integration as a first step. So when you say fabric, explain to the people watching this what, what that means, because it is a relatively, you know, it's a, it's a concept that's, the, the term's thrown around a lot. They're one of the few that actually delivers a true fabric, but how, how do you think about what that is? Yeah, when, when I think about the fabric, and they've done some great demos over the last couple of, of last night and, and this morning as well, where they're trying to show how quickly and easy, it's basically when you think about any to any. So instead of it being deterministic going here to there, it's you can connect any to any, yeah. and it's, it's fault tolerant. So you know they were doing demos last night where it was literally, you just plug in a cable from this box to that box, and a new link comes up. So there's, when you again, thinking about it from an operational efficiency perspective, yeah. that ability to quickly spin up services and have that level of security attached to them as well, I think is an area that, that you know, I think organizations are really looking for from that fabric connectivity. Yeah, and I think what, in some ways, what we're saying here too is, no offense to the product people at Extreme, right? It's not always product, the, how fast your switch is, you know, how many megabits per second you can throw through, right? It's less about speeds and fees and more about those automation capabilities, right? Correct, absolutely. Yeah, and the, the one product, and we'll wrap up on this, that I really like from theirs is, is their digital twin, which is part of their cloud IQ. Uh, digital twin is something that's been widely used in lots of verticals. Industrial, you know, Boeing's big in digital twin for you know rocket design and things like sure. that. Uh, but what do you think digital twin brings the network engineer? So, the interesting part for me, I, and I love the digital twin technology, and I think what that brings to them is the ability to. I think in this early instantiation, it's really about how do we set up and configure and deploy what we've got. But over time, the ability to model the network and be able to run what if scenarios, to run tests, yeah. to run upgrades and all that stuff in an environment in which nothing will get broken physically or at the, as far as the, the, your production environment isn't impacted. So that ability to look at and have an exact duplicate of your production environment where you can run tests, you can model ideas is really going to be huge. Yeah, because network important. engineers never had that ability before. No, it's and, hard to do that yeah, on a Vizio, yeah. right? That's out of date. <laughs> yeah, so. no, as a former network engineer, uh, I can confess this now because I'm one of those companies, I broke a lot of things. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time fixing them. So, you know, think about that. The, from a network yeah. engineer perspective, the ability to run what if scenarios, understand all the implications of what you're doing before you commit the deployment. 
Correct. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be hugely so. important. All right. Well, I think we both came away from the summit uh, uh, pretty positive on the company, right? Absolutely. So looking forward to seeing what they do next. I know they got the Berlin coming up, event yep. coming up. So uh, you know, hopefully we'll see some more news there. So, Absolutely. Uh, anyways, Bob, thanks for joining me. Uh, I think welcome. you and I have to get over to the game now at Fenway, yes. which is my favorite place on earth. So uh, anyways, uh, on behalf of Bob Liberty, thanks for joining me. I'm Zias Caraval from CK Research saying thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.